All right. We're Hello, Wisconsin. Live from the bro, Joe. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> For the Row Bro News, I am Kian, and I'm here today. I just have a fucking headache, okay? <laughs> With... <laughs> Uncontrollably laughing Zach. And Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Alrighty. What have you guys been up to lately? Giving Kian a headache, apparently. I've just had a fucking <laughs> headache all day. I don't know. You were pretty okay earlier. Work. I don't like to think about it, but the later it gets, the more it just gets to me. Work, my good friend. Work. Same I boat as him. Yeah, I will say. I think we're all in the same boat, aren't we? I mean, I do other stuff on my free time. I you watch Digimon Try. Yeah, but that was a yesterday thing. That wasn't an all-week encompassing thing. <laughs> I know, but that's like a big thing that you did. Can you really call it a big thing? Uh, for like a pop culture podcast, yeah, that's a thing That's a thing you did. And like, then, yeah, I guess you obviously have fucking opinions on it. Like, that's the... Yeah, but we're not going to waste time with opinion pieces. We gotta get into that hard news. We don't waste time on stop fucking touching the Burger King thing right now. I'm We're curious. not wasting time on opinion pieces. Yeah. You fucking kidding me? John literally spent 13 minutes one day talking about the semantics of having a penis. And it was hilarious. Sure, but what did you fucking think about Digimon Try? They left it open ended because I know they're gonna try to milk it. Well, what are the money. things that you enjoyed about? It? What are the things you liked and disliked about it? Like, what? What was the main premises of it? Like, what... What else? Well, that'd have to involve the... You want me to start at the beginning and work my way up until the point where I actually watched it? Well, what was the thing you liked about the movie, Gil? That's what I'm fucking asking The most you. recent one? The, the most mo fucking recent one, Gil. Okay, the okay, <laughs> settle. But that just creates a huge gap in what anyone would know. I'm just throwing that out there. Burger King has Chicken Junior sandwiches? Shut the fuck up, Zach. <laughs> Seriously, that's not... <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, Gil, please go I on. I actually didn't know that. So. That's great, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what did I, what I... What did I enjoy about it? What did I not enjoy about it? Yeah, the what? fucking things you... Yeah, that fucking okay. shit. I'm just clarifying. Great. It was a good movie. <laughs> Had a strong beginning. The end was pretty bad because they left it open-ended. And basically, most of the action was just kind of all flash, no substance. Okay. It was just a lot of flashy pictures and not much actual detail mm -hmm. going into it. That's very understandable. It was a very shallow ending because they're trying to milk it for all it's worth. Okay. Which I'm not entirely opposed to. Just so long as they do it properly. Okay. No, that's very, very understandable. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was good. That's good. I'm glad. How about you, Keith? Well, uh, just keeping up with the, uh... Kardashians? <laughs> no. Just keeping up with the spring anime seasons that are coming out. The, uh, just keeping up on Megalobox, Golden Cam Ayu, My Hero Academia. The ones that, uh, two of them, apparently people really, really like, and one of them they don't, so. They don't like Golden Cam Ayu because the CGI doesn't meld well with the, uh, 2D animation, which I can understand. Because you didn't like that bear? It just, it's so uncanny, it doesn't fit, it, like, literally doesn't fit at all. I feel like that bear would beg to differ. And then they CGI, and, like, they don't even see, they they try to do, like, a skinning scene of the bear, and it's still CGI, and it just looks really, really bad. The CGI skin? Yeah, it's just oh, really, that's beautiful. it's really bad. It's, it's like, where, like, I like, I like Megalobox because it has that same animation tone to, like, Lupin the Third and, like, old 90s animation, so what they would do is they, like, they'd animate it modernly and then desaturate it to make it look like it was an um, anime from the 90s. So I gotta respect it for that. Um, the the only problem is, is that like, as a person who really, really likes Hajime no Ippo, and like knowing that like, they took boxing, it takes boxing seriously, 
This anime doesn't take boxing seriously, and it's more melodramatic. So that's why I think it's okay, but I don't think it's like... I don't think it's going to be anime of the year. The first episode made me think that it could have been. But as the series progresses, it just becomes more melodrama than a sports anime. Personally. Aren't sports anime mostly about that melodrama, though? Not the sports animes I like, because personally, I don't like Haikyuu. Okay. And, uh, See, that's the one I was thinking of, because that one just seems like it's all full of melodrama. Where, like, where, like that's the thing, like, Haikyuu is... I don't get why people like Haikyuu when you have Kuroko no Basket and Slam Dunk, which plays off, like, legit basketball, and also keeps that kind of, com- like, teamwork shit going on. Where, like, Haikyuu is like, I'm gonna be the best! Is like literally like the things you can do for a shonen anime. Legitimately in sports, all they really need is like power up volleys and shit like that, and it'd be like, oh, this is like every shonen anime I've ever seen in my life. And that's that's my. Problem. But do they have that one old guy that's crazy perverted and just a weirdly sexualized teenager? Not the. I mean, the internet sexualizes the teenagers weirdly, weirdly. But uh, no, they, they're missing that old. Their mask. Guy. Well, he's he's like in his twenties. He usually he first worked at a supermarket, but he was like, like big on the college scene, of volleyball, and I think he had like an injury or something like that. But apparently, people like IQ. I don't get it. I like Ice Shield 21. I'm not even a big football fan. As long as it's not Yuri on Ice. I don't really care. Have you seen it, though? Or are you just... Why do I want... Why would I want But have to? you seen... See, but that's the thing. So you can't... Like, okay. You I've can't always... judge a book by its cover. No, 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 no. You can't... It's not that you can't judge a book by its cover. It's like how I told Eli. Like, Eli made the perfect point. He's like, I want to hate something, but I want a legit reason to hate it. That's why I watch all this shit, so I have a legit reason to hate it. We're like, I can understand, my dislike of Yuri on Ice is because it overshadowed a lot of good anime of winter 2016. That is legitimately my only problem with Yuri on Ice. I think Yuri on Ice is well written, well animated, and well, like, the storyboards they have look fucking great. And you can tell that the director gives a shit about ice skating to the point where she would spend hours on end at a skating rink watching them, like, s- draw. She would, she would sketch out the ice skaters while they do their pirouettes and things like that. So, when you look at it like that, you can respect it because it took a lot of time. I can respect the labor of love that it is, I'm just not going to give it my time. Right. Because it doesn't look interesting to me. Because it doesn't look interesting, but it, you can't be like, well, it's not like Yuri on... Like, you can just, you can be like, it's not... It's not your type of anime. I watched it. I really enjoyed it. I don't think... That's the thing. I don't like Yuri on Ice more than I like Drifters. I loved Drifters. And that came out the same time Yuri on Ice did. And no one talked about it. Because everyone was talking about Yuri on Ice. That's all of the anime that's awards... That's all the fangirls got on right. it. And it looked really, really gay. All of the anime awards... Literally was all Yuri on Ice, and that's the one thing that made me mad about that. Because not only did Yuri on Ice came out in 2016, My Hero Academia came out, and that got overshadowed too, technically, by the end of the end of the year. The only reason why I think Yuri on Ice became so popular is that when it came out, it came out around the time where people would be voting for their best animes of 2016 and shit like that. And that because it was fresh in people's mind, that's the reason why it became so big. And it had extreme homosexual undertones. I don't even think that. Like, there's a... The fangirls go nuts over that. Yeah, but what do you what do you have to say about, like, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and how popular that was? Like, that... That was the opposite. But there's not many... There's not many dudes that want to be like, I like Connor a lot and sh- stuff like that. But it's still... Well, it still got a lot of awards. That's because that one was actually probably well written. They both were pretty well written. They were both pretty well written. written. Yuri on Ice... All I've gotten... Okay. From what... From not even entering these two 
just looking from the outside, all I've seen from Kobayashi is that it's a decent story, it's well written, it's heartwarming. What I've gotten from Yuri on Ice is it's a bunch of gay dudes figure skating. But that's the thing, there's more to that than just a bunch of gay dudes figure skating. The lit- like the logistics of it is it's a rivalry between both Yuri's, one wanting to be, one jealous that he never got to train under the Victor, and one who wants to be Victor. There's a there's a there's a sheer difference in like this is, this is what I mean though. This is not all melodrama because it is literally it revolves around the ice skating, where Megalobox is robot boxing, and then I'm really poor, and I don't, and I want to get out of the slums. Yuri on Ice, their conflict is even out, their conflict about their ice skating skills is even outside. Like, that doesn't leave his mind. That doesn't leave Yuri's mind that he's not as good as he thinks Victor thinks he should be. Like, even when they're out and about, he'll just start thinking about it. That's what I think makes a good sports anime, is that, like, why I like Hajime no Ippo... That's is, also how Obsession starts. But you know what I mean. Why I like Hajime no Ippo is that, like, he's still, like... You can still have a they're story... Like still trying to protect, yeah. protect their craft. Yeah, where Ippo can still go out on a date and things like that, it's still in the back of his mind that, like, maybe I should be doing this other stuff and things like that. That is, that is the difference between, like, a sports anime that's just pretty boys doing stuff, like Free. I think Free is an okay anime... But there's not really much else to it. Haru likes water. Rin's a dick. Not Ida. Ida is not good at swimming. Yeah. Like, John, Johnny Young, Bosch's character is just there. Like, it's just, that's what I mean, personally. But that's why I feel like, that's why everyone has different tastes in anime. Like, like we were talking about, like, I love Goofy Gohan. Everyone hates Goofy Gohan. I, I really enjoy Goofy Gohan because I think he deserves to be happy and that he has a happy family now in the future is way better than Goku because, you know what I mean, we've had this conversation where, like, Goku doesn't give a shit about his family. As much as everyone wants to defend that Goku gives a shit about his family, Goku doesn't really give a shit a lot of sh- whole shits about his family. Gohan does, and that's why I like it. And that's why I like anything. That's why I like characters that, even though they're quote unquote weaker because the Shonen series made them weaker, because apparently being weak is caring for people and like taking care of your family. So fucking be it. That's why I like. I think, as much as I don't like Boruto, I like Sasuke in Boruto, because he's no longer like, I hate the world. It's stupid. He's like, oh man, I have something I need to legitimately protect. And I actually care for. It's all about character development for me for some characters. Like, Gohan is like one of my favorite characters. I like the way he kept developed. Moving right along. Let's go to Ant-Man and Wasp. The trailers, and I'm pretty stoked for this. Like, ah. Oh. I feel like I need to see the first one to know where this one's going. But it does look enjoyable. You've never seen Ant-Man? You know what? I'm not going to ask you because I know you don't see shit at all. I've actually seen parts of Ant-Man. That's great, Zach. I know you just don't see shit. And it's weird that it so happens that now that you do stuff like this, you're like, oh, I'm going to see stuff now. Cool. We're like, I like it. I loved Ant-Man. I think Ant-Man was like one of my favorite movies. We're like... Everyone is like, Guardians is the funniest movie ever! I'm like, nah, Ant-Man. Ant-Man, Ant-Man plays it more of a, as a heist film, but a comedic heist film. And it's so good to me. I think it's so fun. It's so, it's so interesting. And, and I, they're using Scott Lang so they don't have to worry about Hank Pym, you know, slapping people. So, uh, the original Ant-Man beat his wife in the yeah, comics. Yeah, so like, so it looks really exciting. They're using Ghost as a as the villain, which is weird because like Ghost is usually an Iron Man villain. So I'm really excited for this. I really I really can't wait for this to go out and see what we have. But Iron Man's on a different planet. What are they <laughs> gonna do? Yeah, don't spoil it. 
Man, we put out a spoiler episode. A I know time. that doesn't mean shit though. There's some people that are like I don't want to listen to this because it spoils it. Like if you put spoiler, I people... mean, eventually people will realize right. that, that happened. I mean, they show right. stuff like that in the trailers. Right. I'm not really spoiling anything. Pretty sure in the trailers he was on that. Dude, anyways. Facebook fucking ruined uh, Infinity Wars for, like, everyone after day two. Really? How? Because everyone was, like, fucking posting the... <laughs> them being pixelated... <laughs> Spider-Man yeah. memes? No, or... it's them being pixelated memes. The death memes. <laughs> the death memes. It's like, everybody was just memeing the shit out. <laughs> yes! Well, that's why you stay off the fucking internet. It was, like, day two. It was, like, after we got done seeing it. That next morning, I woke up. And everyone's like, I'm not feeling so good, and just... <laughs> it started with Sponge, the dead, the rip my pants Spongebob, yeah. and the fish guy holding him crying, and <laughs> he's like disappearing. It was like... And then it just escalated from there. Yeah, and like, the, I tried not to spoil it, so I did the, the spoiler that was like, out of context, and it was like, Squidward was on it, dust, the doctor saying, I don't want to go! <laughs> it's like... Just things that you would have never known or thought about. And it was just, it was good. Like, the internet, like, that's the thing. The internet started ruining movie, memeing movies and ruining them, I think, at Civil War, Captain America Civil War. I think I explained, I don't know, I think I explained it to you or I explained it to Jay that, like, when Civil War came out that next day, the first meme I saw was Bert whispering to Ernie, Hail Hydra. And that was just... No, you said the Winter Soldier. Yeah, Winter Soldier memed the shit. Like, that was the first time, like, memes spoiled the shit out of a movie. Where, like, people were, like... Then it was during also the time of the presidential elections that, like, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump were hugging. And someone put the caption, Hail Hydra, on there. <laughs> and it was just, like... One of the best and worst thoughts in my head was in my... I'm like, uh, this is funny. But it's also not good. Then we're gonna go to Teen Titans Go, the movie, and I, I, I'm, I'm not for it. I don't think anybody's for it. No, I'm not for it. I said they had some good episodes that were enjoyable. However, the majority of what they show is not that good. It really is, and I don't know why they're making a movie at this point. It's like they the My Little got... Pony route. They like it's cheap animation, yeah, but could... they can get a higher budget for that cheap animation. And Where then put that rest of that budget into not that animation. <laughs> put that budget into getting fucking famous people to voice your characters. Mm. Nick Cage, Donald Glover. Um, I can't remember who's Wonder Woman. Who's They've got a really good cast for these guys. Who's Nick Cage? Superman. Really? Yeah, Nicolas Cage is Superman. Now I have to I see that, that movie. too. Damn it, now I have to see that movie. Well, Nick Cage is Superman. I fucking told film. you this like two weeks ago. I was like, you messed up. We were talking about Nicolas Cage being Superman in the Teen Titans Go movie. You're like, oh, that's that's different. The Nicolas Cage could be the Joker. Damn it. I just like for me, I just have I have this legit like I don't I don't like Teen Titans Go. And I and I know people on the internet have tried to tell me how good Teen Titans Go is in itself. I don't think it is. Like, here's my honest reason why I don't think Teen Titans Go is good. And it's, it is because of this. Have you watched any of it? I have. Okay. I've watched enough of it to know. And I watched it on Hulu because, like, I'll use things to go to sleep. And Teen Titans Go, I'll turn Teen Titans Go on just to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just use something. Just I just need noise in the background. I'm like, I guess Teen Titans Go. Continue. I can watch. There is only two episodes I did not hate a lot, and that was when Raven, because in in Teen Titans Go canon, Raven technically doesn't have legs. That's why she's floating all the time. So she gains legs, removes her coat, cape, and becomes Lady Legola, Lady Legasis. Yeah, and she has thick thighs and is kicking the shit out of people. And Beast Boy is just like drooling over it. And I'm like, I feel you, Beast Boy. I feel you. And then the other one is the Beast Boy singing to Tara because Greg Clips is just a surfer dude that plays guitar in real life. And he intricated it with Beast Boy. And they have really shitty flash animation of Beast Boy as a cat. So the cat's just doing this to the guitar. 
and that's like how he's strumming the guitar. Like that are the that is like shit you not the only two things from Teen Titans Go I watch. What about I, the Night Begins to Shine episode? No. Like that the time where they like straight up were like, I wanna we you guys need to be more serious and they had the cast of Young Justice telling them that and then they fucking do that one eighty. That made me even more mad. Because like Teen Titans Go, the only reason why Teen Titans Go is making so much money, and this is why it will not be canceled and you will never get another Teen Titans, like the Teen Titans we grew up as those kids, is because it doesn't make, it didn't make them money when it comes to marketing. You can market the shit out of chibi Teen Titans and you'll get fucking millions back because kids will buy the plushies because they think it's cute and adorable. Or grown-ass fucking adults will go to a con and be like, Oh my god, that Raven plush is so adorable. How much is it? Sixty dollars? Yeah! What kind of... What kind of adult would spend sixty dollars on a plush? Kind of Dude, plush there's some that? fucking people who spend a lot of money on plushes at conventions. I saw someone spend forty dollars on a fucking Funko. Those are barely worth the $10 they're priced at. They're not worth priced at $10. They're priced at like 15 They're like 12 Oh, well, I'm fucking... No, I don't buy Funkos. I get them for my birthday because people think because I'm a nerd, I collect Funkos. Zach, we get him 10 Funkos for his birthday. He got a Ryu one. Yeah, my sister got me a Ryu Funko. We get him ones that we know he won't like. <laughs> All the Teen That's Titans the master ones. plan. All the Teen Titans ones. There we go. <laughs> like, my sister, when she got me that, she was like, it was either this or Naruto, and I saw that you dressed as him, so I bought this. I'm like, oh, dude, if you got me a Naruto one, I'm going to chuck that. It's just, like, hard. I don't even give a fuck. No, but, like, back on this, like, I don't think Teen Titans... I didn't even like the fucking Deadpool joke they had. No, when I Will Arnett's like, slit, and that's another thing, okay? They're bringing I, back a major villain from the original series as a joke character for the movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes me super mad. If you want to do that, you should have had Ron Perlman just do it. Just voice Slade and just, fine, make Slade goofy, but bring back well, Ron Perlman and not Lego Batman. Yeah. I'm one of those people, though. I don't... I have no hope for this to be good. But it's going to make a ton of money because parents are going to bring their kids because it looks goofy. Mm, bombs. I have to see it because it has Nick Cage. It's not going to bomb, Zach. It's not going to make Avengers money, which we'll get into, good well, God. No. I know it's not going to bomb, not but I'm just saying bombs. I hope, but it's not going to. People are going to continuously take their kids because their kids watch... The shit-ass Teen Titans go. And that's because that's all they ever have playing on Cartoon Network. Right. Here's the, like, and I can get why people, like, are not excited for that live-action Teen Titans series. I understand it. But there's you, two... You're not going to, don't say it's going to be better than Teen Titans Go, because if the finished product does end up being bad, people will shit on you. No, here's what, here's the two things I don't like about people's con like opinion about that opinion about that is using I told Zach this like three weekends ago is using people is using set photos where they don't edit the shit or anything to like for TV format it's just them the actors just walking around and about not being filmed for the show they're supposed to do because there's a big difference between being professionally filmed so you so you make yourself look good and just walking around like a normal human being. And everyone's like, oh, it's going to be shit because of that. Look at their costumes, it doesn't make sense. I'm like, look at Superman's costume when he's just out and about and then look at the, the movie. They have to do a lot of lighting edits and shit like that to make Superman look like that. That's my problem. And they then, also have to spend a bunch of money on CGI to remove that beard. Yeah, but then, no, 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 and here's the thing that got me, and I told Zach this, and I don't know if you agree with me, but then the cosplay community jumped on it, and they're like, look how shitty these guys look in their cut Titans costume, look how cool we are. They're showing their edited pictures that they used to sell prints for. It's like, yeah, because like, you paid someone to let you pose, and take that picture, and then you paid another person to edit it to make it look more like a comic book character. 
Of course. But if someone took a picture of you just in your random, your random Raven or Starfire cosplay and you weren't ready, you weren't, you are going to look like that. Do you know what I mean? That, that's where I stand. And plus, I really like the way Beast Boy looks because, like, besides him not having green skin, he has green hair. And he has his classic changeling costume from right post-Doom Patrol. Because the Beast Boy costume that we all know is his Beast Boy costume from Doom Patrol because their color palette was black and purple. When Beast Boy was on Teen Titans by himself, he had, red a, and white. He had, he had his red and white suit. That's why I'm really excited for this because Beast Boy has his classic Beast Boy costume. Beast and not his Doom Patrol costume. I know everyone really likes Doom Patrol Beast Boy, because, like, that's the one we grew up with, but, like, I also read comics, and his I was like... feet had animal prints on this. Yeah! Thing. He had paws. I mean, both figuratively and literally. Yes. But that that's the thing. No, oh, no, because costume design and actual photography are two different things. If they're ripping on the costumes, I can see that from a cosplayer's perspective, because they do put a bunch of work into their costumes. But here's the thing, though. like, They're ripping on it because they, like, they, they think the actors don't look good in them. But like, well, That's a, just something entirely different. And they're like, look how bad this is. And they were also like, the Raven costume you couldn't see because it was cold, so when you're not filming, you wear a bulky coat. When it's cold, they're like, the Raven costume looks stupid. I'm like, that's not the costume. That's her coat because she's fucking cold. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's the same thing with the girl who played Starfire. You don't see the full costume. You see part of it. And the rest is covered up in a fur coat because it's 15 degree weather. Like I said, there's a difference between the actual photography stuff outside of that and there's the costume design in and of itself. So. Right. That's what I mean, though. Like, that's why I just don't... That's why I have a problem... With people... Right, like... Shade. Yeah. Well, because, like... Like, one of our friends started, like, posted this meme, and then everyone was jumping on us. It's gonna be shit. It's gonna look bad. I mean, most people are just thinking that because of the, that's their predetermined... Yeah. Opinion. Like, and this one girl freaked out. She's like, I don't understand why Cyborg isn't part of the... Why Cyborg is in the Justice League now. It's like, because they wanted a more diverse cast, and they didn't want to do a Black Green Lantern anymore. And, like, Cyborg was both young and diverse, so they thought if they put Cyborg in the Justice League in the New 52, it would bring in readers. It didn't, but... <laughs> it didn't. It's here nor there, but, like, that's the thing. Like, it's just, like, going into this. Like, you see... It's, like, our next one, Cloak and Dagger. You see how bad it's going to be because you actually see the trailer. You see what they're editing to make it look like. So what you want to say is let, let them throw a trailer out before we make a yeah. judgment. Yeah, before you throw a judgment out on anything else, and it's just like... Like my opinions on the New Mutants and how I think it's going to be garbage, even though you disagree. Right, and I can, you, can, uh, you can have that opinion, you can have mine. But we both saw it, but we saw it differently. Yes. That's the thing. This is just, like I said, it's just a still image. It's like when we report, like, hey, here's this image of this. And like we're like, it looks interesting. So TMZ style? Right, when people... <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, we we I ba we basically said, like, when a picture comes out, we're like, well, that looks accurate enough, or that looks interesting. I hope it ever turns out good. Well, I like no, the way... Wasp has a penis on her chest. Wasp does have a penis on her chest, and <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that one. But, like... Let's go to Ant-Man and Wasp. We already talked about that. Yeah. Let's go back to it. Well, but when we talk about... We're back to Cloak and Dagger, but, like, that's what I mean. Like, I, I'm seeing this trailer, and I, like, there's nothing that's interesting about this. Properties. This is super melodrama and like, I need you, but you kill me. I need you, but you also kill me. Still a better love story than Twilight. Probably, I don't know. It seems like the premise of Twilight, actually. No. No. See, they're not vampires. And like, not one of them wants to be turned into the vampire, not, and the other one is like, I can't, because then you won't be pure. Which is an allegory to abstinence. Was that that whole thing? She was a Mormon who believed in abstinence, so, like, yeah. Uh, that's just stupid. Then we go into my favorite trailer. Evil Genius. It's the Netflix series about the pizza bomb heist. I think 30 minutes or less did it better. <laughs> it's just a bizarre concept that I really want to see how it turns out. I mean, you can you already know how it turns out. I know, but like I want. Aziz Ansari did a funny joke. 
here and there. And in the end, you know, everybody had a good time. Probably. So, all right, guys, let's hit the movie news. Fox is fast-tracking a movie version of the hit Broadway musical Monty Python Spamalot with the original Python Eric Idle writing the script. Hmm. I'm excited. I love Monty Python. Monty Python has this dark cynicism to their comedy that I've always enjoyed, and it's also just gonzo bizarre sometimes, as in, like, the intro. A random foot just falls, and that's the end of the Monty Python intro. Vin Diesel teases Africa as a potential setting for the upcoming Fast and Furious 9 and 10, and says Justin Lin will direct both films. I don't want to see either of them. Well, what I want to know is will they have Africa by Toto playing in the background? You know what I really hope about this, though? I hope The Rock fucking fights an elephant in this. He's already fought a torpedo. Just might as well go. A rhinoceros. Yeah, just like... But he did that in Jumanji, didn't he? That was a hippo. Okay. Yeah. He, he threw Hall. Kevin Hart at rhinos. He threw though. Kevin Hart at okay. rhinos. Jack Black got eaten by hippos. He defanged a snake. Did The Rock ever die in that? I keep yeah, forgetting. Yeah, he got pushed off a cliff by Ridge. Kevin Hart. <laughs> okay, so you don't mind Kevin... that we spoil this movie, but you're all about not spoiling Avengers. Because this is not on, like, that's out on DVD. Yeah, but everybody's not already ruined Avengers see anyway. It. Right, we're all like, fine, you can ruin Avengers, I don't give a shit, I'm just saying, I feel bad, like, if someone's like, oh man, I like I mean, listening. we're not intentionally trying to ruin it, I'm just saying, Iron Man was on a different planet, they showed it in the trailers. Man, I'm I mean, unless gonna... you feel like that post-apocalyptic wasteland is Earth. I'm just gonna, that's just the title, Gil okay, Spoils Okay, look, it's Avenger. been a week, if you haven't seen Avengers Infinity War yet, then come on. I literally know someone who's seeing Avengers Infinity Wars tonight. Well, then they're not listening to this, are they? He's got a point. They can't be listening to this because this doesn't even go up tonight. So, yeah, no, that's fine. So, but, like, <laughs> I really want to see The Rock fight either a rhino Just or a... some giant animal. A giraffe. No, 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 no. The oh, Rock he fucking... Punches. He punches the neck and it breaks until he finally gets No, I think face. The Rock should just, like, uplift a tree. That, that should probably be... There's nothing more the fucking dude can do after that. He can break a giraffe's neck until he punches it in the face. Until the rock fights a literal dragon, there's nothing really fucking else he can do where I'm like, wow, the rock has gone overboard on this. He teamed up with fucking King Kong to fight a wolf. I still haven't seen that. Is I'm it any good? It. It's okay. Really? Like I said, um, the Tomb Raider could have been more video gamey, where Rampage could have toned down on it. Their main character, their main antagonist, reminded me of Jesse and James because they're like goofy and evil, and they're they're like, "Whoops, I tripped." Wait, in Rampage? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Tomb Raider's villain, Steak Sauce, one of my favorite villains of all time. So well, then it's debatable whether they're good or not. Never misses a character. Like he do he doesn't hit Laura Croft, but hits the guy behind her. Still has, still. 10 out of 10 targets. None missed. He doesn't... Technically, those are either, all misses. He? If he's aiming for Laura Croft, and he doesn't hit No, Laura there was Croft. only one time he shot at Laura Croft. She, she like, ducked, and it hit another slave worker that Laura was trying to free. And I'm like, what the fuck? So then he still missed. He never reloads either, right? Yeah, he has... There was no reload for his gun. And he just had a six-shooter revolver. And he's just plowing people down. Was this, like, between the scene? Yeah. There was a split... There was, like... The way that it's cut, it, it was supposed to be a legit, like... One continuous one scene. One continuous scene. Then, yeah, that's bull. <laughs> the author of The Loudest Voice in the Room, Gabriel Sherman, will pen the screenplay for the movie based on U.S. President Donald Trump. Oh, boy. Why are we getting a film about him? Why are we doing this now? He's still in office. Does anybody want a film about him? Donald Trump. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> His supporters. Yeah, but do they really matter? But I don't think they want to. <laughs> but that's the thing. I don't want. I don't think they want like this. You know. Is it gonna be a movie of bashing him, or is it just a yeah? Movie the about his the presence? loudest voice in the room was the movie like not bashing him, but like t saying how awful he was during his first like three months in the White House. Oh boy. 
Well, I mean, we still haven't gotten to war with North Korea, so there's that to look forward to. Yeah, but they're te- working together now. Yeah. Chris Pratt confirms on social media, post Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will be filming at some point next year, presumably for a 2020 release. Yeah. Hooray. What are you going to do, though? Like, that's my question. Like, what is... Like, they're going to bring you-know-who back. She, I, they're not coming back. That that one that one is probably for certain that that person you're thinking of... I don't think so. They're not coming back. They probably are. I don't think so. They, they are. They are. Mm. They're not just going to let... No. They're, they're not just going to let that person die like that. Then they're, they're probably going to go up against Adam Warlock. I don't, I don't think that's why that person's not going to come back, because Adam War, Warlock needs the Soul Stone. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they can't do things before he gets the Soul Stone. Deadpool's two-star Ryan Reynolds reveals the movie originally contained a particular joke about Disney that 20th Century Fox made him cut out. <laughs> of course they did. Deleted scenes! Probably won't even get there. Fuck. So, the Avengers at the second week of the box office has reached over a billion dollars. Would have they gone to one trillion dollars? I love the post where uh, the creator of Star Wars is handing. Hanging. Yeah, it's like someone posted the Spider Man meme and it's just Disney pointing at Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! Like, Disney literally. They gave only, itself a pat on the back. Well, no, the only <laughs> movie that isn't on there that they own that is reached the top 10 highest grossing movies is Jurassic World. So yeah, at this point they're just patting themselves on the back. Yeah, everything else that's over. Wait, when did okay, when did they actually buy those properties, and when did they those movies actually get into that position? All of them are like it's right, the two yeah. Star Wars movies, the three Avengers movies, and Black Panther, and Jurassic World. I thought the first Avengers movie didn't come out. It's owned by Disney. Really? Uh huh. The first one? Yep. That was the first one of the movies that got a Disney logo. Ah. Weird. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, yeah, Disney. You have monopolized the movie world now. Way to go. You're stroking your own dick. Ryan Reynolds still has hope that he can have a Deadpool Wolverine movie, even though Hugh Jackman retired. And I don't want that, because Hugh Jackman retired like a fucking boss. Couldn't they just bring someone new in to do He wants show? Hugh Jackman to be Wolverine. Hugh Jackman is the best movie. Well, yeah, and he's the yeah. only Wolverine we know besides Steve Bloom, who's just the voice. Yeah. But no, I don't want... Like like I said, Hugh Jackman went out like a fucking boss. Why do I want to see him try again? <laughs> he went out like a man. I did you like boss. Logan? I did, but I'm not saying he went out like a boss, because he didn't. He died. <laughs> he went out like a man. If he went out like a boss, he'd be riding a freaking rocket to the sun. While stroking his own cock, blowing everything up along the way, Alrighty. killing five thousand people. Well, the gambit's Alter- been alternate ending. The gambit spinoff is apparently still happening. Really? Yeah, that's weird. Ryan Reynolds think doesn't think Deadpool three will happen anymore, point but points to X Force being the future of the Deadpool series. I mean that could work. Which is understandable if you're bringing in a team for X Men. Of, of X-Men to Deadpool 2, you might as well just keep going on with the series. Plus, I'm not gonna lie, I still don't like Deadpool as much as everyone else did. I I'm, just think Ryan Reynolds does a good job with the character. I think Ryan Reynolds does a great job with the character. Like I said, every year, every time we've had a talk about Deadpool, I think that just people oversaturate the shit out of Deadpool. I mean, it could be Keanu Reeves. They could throw him in there as the one, Neo, and then incorporate the Matrix into there. I don't really... No, what I mean is that, like, in general, like, I just feel like Deadpool is just a little... Like, everybody is just, like... It's not even me, me being contrary, and it's just, like... There's there's fans who are like, I remember when he first appeared in the Rob Liefeld comics. And then there's people who are like, Oh, Deadpool and a cat, isn't that cool? And there's tacos and there's rainbows farting out of it. No, people that are just in it for the meme. <laughs> yeah, I just hate that. There's something about like there's like there's like a legit depth to Deadpool where Deadpool doesn't kill children and was about to brutally murder someone 
who murdered a child even though the future said he was going to be a raging dictator. And he's like, that doesn't mean anything. That That's a fucking child. Like, that's the Deadpool I like. Like, the I can... One with the... the one with depth that is, like, the reason why he's so fucking fourth wall breaking is because of all the mental trauma he says, but, like, deep down inside you still know that, like, there is a character in there. A character that eventually went on to kill the whole Marvel Universe. Yes, and had sex with Death herself. Yeah. Or howdy that the adventures that man could tell. Yeah. <laughs> but what, the, but that's <laughs> what I mean, though. That's literally how I feel about, like, where, like, if you just, He's like... He's more than just Jimmy Yeah, yeah and... See, Deadpool was cool to me when you could be Deadpool in Ultimate Alliance. Because, like, I was not... people with the health bar? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my other thing about that is, like, Deadpool wasn't super popular. So it was weird to have it... When you're playing it, the first one at least, he's just, like, calling out how bad he sucks at this game. And you're like, what? Does this person really do shit like this? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, he does. Marvel Studios is reportedly being very thorough on selecting the director for the Black Widow movie, meeting with over 65 filmmakers. Get it right. Get it right. It's the only thing the fans want. Ryan Reynolds admits he's never watched the finished version of the Green Lantern movie, only seeing a rough cut late in post-production. I wonder if these are about Ryan Reynolds. It's probably for the best. Well, you see, Zach, Ryan Reynolds is very popular because he has a fucking movie coming out. So, like, when, when like, people who apparently... This is the cool thing. Like, last year, I had to siphon through the news uh, during the time we went to the convention because I went to some of those uh, fucking... fucking uh, question, qu- panels. Panels where people ask questions and they vaguely answer it. And they're like, well, this is a news story. Like Stan Lee, we went to the Stan Lee panel, right? And someone asked, like, what do you think about Avengers 3? Well, it's going to be interesting and different, and there's going to be something you'll never forget. And then they're like, Stan Lee said it. There's going to be something. You don't, we don't know what it is, but it's going to be amazing. So they make a vague story around a vague answer. Yeah, or, or they're like... This is another one. Two years ago, I went to Wizard World, and, like, do you remember? Okay, so Agents of Shields was, like, big back in the time. So, like, Chloe Bennett was like, I'd love to team up with the Marvel movies. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, is it possible that Marvel TV shows and Marvel movies are coming together? Because I asked at a panel at Des Moines Wizard World in fucking Des Moines, Chloe Bennett said she'd love for that to happen. <laughs> I hate those. They make me so mad. It's like if I went to the voice of Mario, which I really like that guy, and we have a cool story about him in the video games, and asked, like, so, are you going to be voicing Mario in the Illumination film? Who knows? He's like, oh, I hope so. And I wrote, I came up here like, guys, it's certain. There's, there's like, 99% possibility. Charlie, the voice of Mario in the video games, is going to voice Mario in the movie. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. shit. But this is more like interviews, just asking questions. And so, like, yeah, like, where I can understand there's probably no future with Deadpool 3 because they introduced X-Force and fucking Nate Summers, a.k.a. Cable. You can't really have him in Deadpool 3. What are you going to do with him? Have him be Cable. You know what I mean, though. I mean, unless he has to go against Satellite, I'm pretty sure he's okay. Todd McFarlane's reboot of Spawn at the Blumhouse production reportedly offered Jamie Foxx the chance to play the lead anti-hero role. That wouldn't be so bad, actually. But the idea is, I think they said they turned it down because Spawn wasn't going to talk at this entire movie, apparently. He was just going to be an enigmatic figure. And two detectives were trying to figure out whether or not this was a murder or supernatural. Hmm. Which is, eh, I'm not a big fan of Spawn. Like, I know a lot of people really like Spawn. Are you one of them? Maybe. Do you like Spawn? <laughs> I do enjoy Spawn. Oh, no, that's totally understandable. I, too, also like Venom Batman. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Fucking look at him. And look at his powers. 
And tell me he doesn't remind you of Venom Batman. Okay, hold on. Gil, I can understand why you disagree, and I can agree with that. It's very understandable. God damn it. So, Michael Bray produced live-action Dory the Explorer movie at Paramount Pictures, cast Transformers 5, Isabella Moner as its lead role. It's Why? that girl who said, fight like a girl in those Transformers 5 trailers. Why? Yep, I can definitely see Venom Batman. Told you. <laughs> I can see it. But why? For a live action Dora the Explorer movie? But why? You didn't want that, Gil? No, who would? Who wanted a live action Dora the Explorer film? I don't know, but apparently people are wanting it. Why? I've never heard anybody say, you know what I want? A live action Dora the Explorer. I'd rather take a live action Blues Clues. I'm genuinely serious. That show was awesome. That'd be interesting, actually, if they made a live-action movie. I wanted to be a murder mystery. Yeah, though. that's what yeah. I was thinking too. Make it gritty and realistic. Like where blue isn't blue really blue. blue. Yeah, like it just has a blue sweater or something. It's not a blue dog. It's no. like got blue no, eyes. No, it's like a demon, but it's in his head. Yeah. He's schizophrenic. And that's, and that's why I like the so salt good. and stuff talks to him and mm -hmm. like okay, okay. There we I, go. I dig it. Isn't I dig it. Theory about blues clues. Yeah. That he's like got some mental disease and that's why he sees a blue dog. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea that was a thing. There are weird know. theories out there. For Dude, yeah, there's some weird fan theories. Seth Rogen reveals that Nicolas Cage came really close to playing the villain and opposite Seth Rogen in the Green Hornet movie. Oh, oh that would have been so cool. I actually really like Green Hornet too. I know a lot of people didn't fucking enjoyed that movie that was my shit so this is the thing that's super interesting hasbro has just required the rights to savant's power pa to what power rangers. power rangers possibly setting the stage for power rangers movies reboot at paramount which would make me sad because i really 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 liked the power rangers movie we got yeah it was really really good aside from that speech after billy dies yeah it was all right oh man it was just a good movie like is this the kid and me was awesome but like that's the thing fucking goddamn Hasbro sucks G.I. Joe awful Transformers uh, awful Gem and the Hologram stupid Battleship are you kidding me why would you throw Rihanna in there I was gonna say Rihanna was a battle wasn't she yeah well my thing about this is that like it just I like G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra and if they play it can't be like that fine because G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra was not Rise of Cobra. Uh, was it? No, it wasn't Rise of Cobra. No, the one with The Rock. That probably was Rise of Cobra. Yeah. No, Rise of Cobra at Channing Tatum. Oh. Uh, yeah, the second G.I. Joe. I don't know, I remember what it's called. It had the RZA playing the Blind Master. And, and dude, it was fucking good. It was a G.I. Joe film. It was like camped up. Didn't someone have a motorcycle that became a rocket? Yes. Oh, Hasbro. Yup. You're just one badass. Are they going to keep going. the cast from the old, from the Power Rangers movie from a few years ago? Probably they gonna... not. Aww. They didn't do that bad, aside from that speech scene after Billy died. John yeah, B but to be fair, most speeches in movies don't go 100%. You mean like the in that, yeah, Infinity yeah, War yeah, one? Yeah, mm -hmm. You know full well what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Because we had a conversation about this. Yes, we did. So, yeah. A bitch. John Boyega hints the significant time jump between the events of Star Wars The Last Jedi and the episode, upcoming Star Wars Episode Nine. Wow, they this really one will be two days. <laughs> you fucking hate that, don't you? Just It takes literally a day. You can't explain it any other way. This time syncups would be no, wrong. No, Ray sleeps like three times. I keep telling you this. You could just be taking naps. I legit keep telling you this. There's in sync though, the whole time. All of the events. Yeah, in it's not sync. Like Kylo Ren. It takes one freaking day. It's not like Kylo Ren was. You know, I don't, I'm not thing. arguing with you on this. Like, I don't give it. I did he not. was actually in space as the whole thing was happening. My dude, I legit just did not like the Last Jedi. Like, I was probably. In the, really in the review circle we had of me, Hale, John, and Eli, I was the one who le liked it the least. Like, I was not for it. I was like, mm, nah, kibosh it. 
They could have given Luke a better ending, but no. Let's make him go all Force Ghost and then just like die for whatever reason. So, Roseanne's revival ratings are dropping rapidly, leaving <laughs> Lost having lost nearly half its view audience since its record-breaking premiere last month. Oh well, yeah, that's right. Roseanne's back. I forgot about that. I'm, I'm super really okay with this because I never liked Roseanne and I don't understand the uh, liking of Roseanne. I don't understand the liking of Full House, but they brought that back. I don't like that show either. Exactly. My mom made, like, my, my, someone made a point to me, and I, I think it was Eli's, and he's like, well, you weren't raised poor. I'm like, no, I wasn't, but, like, I wasn't raised rich either. I was just, I don't. Raised middle class. We're Do like. Does Eli like Roseanne? I don't know if Eli. I don't see I think Eli's that family show likes Roseanne, I think. But, like, I don't like Roseanne just because she was loud, obnoxious, and annoying. Like, I just, it's not my thing. So, like, Melissa McCarthy, but more 90s. I also don't like Melissa McCarthy either. No, she's awful. I didn't it sounds like boiling water. It's probably the humidifier. That's my humidifier. <laughs> I didn't like Roseanne that much either. DC's Digital Service orders a Swamp Thing TV series. I'm pretty stoked about this one. Live action? Live action. It could be good. Could be good. And the final story we have, The Simpsons has overtaken the Western TV show Gunsmoke when it comes to most episodes produced for primetime scripted series. This is super interesting and exciting to me is because, like, I understand that, like, The Simpsons has not been good since the early 2000s, but, like, it really hasn't. They're, they're, I have never... If you, look at the, if you look at just the rating scale and how it dropped, it's really interesting, though. I think I enjoy it a lot. I have never continuously watched The Simpsons at all. And I'm glad that they beat records. So either. I, I'm glad they beat records. That's my positive on that. Eh. And now that they beat the record, they're going to stop making Simpsons. No, they're not. No, no they're, not. they're not. I know. Gives them too much money. It's like why they're never going to stop making Family Guy, even though it's garbage. Money. Money. All right, so that's been the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.